49. Hydrogen sulfide is a pollutant found in natural gas. Following its removal, it is converted to sulfur by the reaction. So we have 2 H2S gas plus SO2 gas, which comes to equilibrium with 3 over 8 S8, and then plus 2 H2O liquid. So the question is saying, what is the equilibrium constant for this reaction? And then is this reaction either endothermic or exothermic? Okay, so let's first answer the first question. They just want to know what the equilibrium constant is for this question. Now, keep in mind that the equilibrium constant is a K value, right? It's a capital K. Now, there's so many different K values, right? Ka, Kb, Kc, Kd, Keq. There's a Kf, and you, you kind of get the hint, right? It doesn't really matter what K value we're looking for here. It's probably going to be a Kp value, because I do see that we have gases and pressures go with gases, but it doesn't matter, right? Now... They, they basically didn't give us anything, but the easiest way to find this out is link up equilibrium constant with Gibbs free energy or energy values. So the formula that we're going to use here is the one that's written down below, right? Equilibrium constant, if I just pull this out and maybe we'll put it over here for now. Equilibrium constant, which is capital K, equals the E on the uh, calculator, and this is raised all to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So let's see what we can plug in. Now, the R value they didn't give us, but the R value is always constant, right? It's always going to be 8.314. Now, if we use 8.314, just know that the units are joules per mole times Kelvin. So it kind of gives you a heads up as to what units are allowed for the Gibbs free energy, delta G, and the temperature. Kelvin is allowed. So the, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Now, they didn't give me a temperature, so I'm going to assume that we can use standard conditions. And if I am using the back of a book appendix values for delta G, the temperature for that is room temp, which is 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298.15 degrees Kelvin. So they kind of go hand in hand. If we're going to use the delta G values in the back of the book, which surprise, we are going to use them, we have to use that room temp temperature. But the thing is now, in order to find that equilibrium constant, I just got to find out that delta G value. So that's where we're going to have to pause and find out what the Gibbs free energy is for this reaction. So what I did is I went to the back of the textbook to an appendix and I got all the delta G values for each individual component because we just have to find out the total overall delta G. So what's the formula when we have individual delta G values and we just want to find out the, the Gibbs free energy for the whole reaction? It's this right here, right? It's delta G equals, and maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. That's good enough. Delta G of the whole reaction, Rxn is reaction, is the sum, that's what this symbol is, the sum, or add, of all the products minus the sum of all the reactants. Now, what you have to do is just, these values that you found in the back of the book is only for one mole of your substance. So that's why we just have to look at the balanced equation. There were two H2Ss, there was only one SO2, there was three over eight S8s, and there was two H2Os. For each value, you're gonna have to multiply by that number. So I'm gonna multiply the negative 33.4 times by two, negative 300.1, that's times by one, just good practice. Zero is going to be times by three eights because the three eights was the coefficient, and then the negative 237.1 multiplied by two. Now you just have to add up both sides. So it would be these two reactants added together. And these two reactants, or sorry, these two products added together. So let's see what the sum we get. So I'll do the reactants first. Calci, two times negative 33.4 plus a negative 300.1. And that looks good to me. So the total for the reactant side is a negative 366.9. And then the total for the product side, I just have to take two times 
negative 237.1 because anything times by zero is zero, right? So the overall products would be negative 474.2. Now, since I have my two values for the reactants and the products, I'm just going to plug them in. So let's see what that delta G is. Delta G for the whole entire reaction is the sum of the products, which was negative 474.2. And I'm just going to minus uh, the reactants, negative 366.9. And let's, I guess we can do it over here. Delta G, eh, we'll do it down here. Delta G notch, which just means standard, is I could just pull these values up. So this value minus the top value. Beautiful. And we get negative 107.3. Now units here are in kilojoules because the units in the back of the text is kilojoules per mole, but all the numbers that we multiplied by the coefficients, those are moles. So the moles cancel out and you're just left with kilojoules. But now we know what the delta G is. So the delta G is going to be negative 107.3. But this is in kilojoules. Remember, the R value, only joules are allowed. So maybe what I'll do is I will just convert this kilojoule into joules. And then I'll use that value, right? Kilojoules into joules, that's easy. Just multiply by 1,000. Similarly, take the decimal, move it to the right. Is that the right? Yeah, that's the right. Move to the right three spots. So this would be a... Negative 107.3 with two zeros, so negative 107,300. And that's the number that I'm going to use for this negative 107, 3,000 joules. Okay, let's do it up. K equals E, all raised to the negative. The negative is in the formula. But then the delta G is another negative. So keep in mind as to what's going to happen there. And then we have our two values. So we have our 8.314. And then we have the 298.15. Let's just bring this down a little bit just so that we're not conflicting. That's good. Now what I would do is I would just simplify this whole fraction into one number. Then we can just take that E value. So K equals E raised to what? What would this be simplified? Well, we can say negative and another negative, or we could just keep in mind that a negative times a negative is a positive. So I can just throw in that 107.300 divided by 8.314. And then if I'm not using parentheses and I want to just show that this is in the denominator, I'm just going to press divide again. 298, 298.15 and press enter. Okay, so we have E now raised to 43.2867 and some more numbers. Keep in mind that this is not the uh, final answer, so I'm not going to round. So I'm going to say second LN, that's the E button, and I'm going to pull and take all those values and press enter. And now there we go. Uh, technically, we didn't start off with any sig figs, so let's just call it at at three, I guess, 6.29. So that would be three zero if we rounded it to three sig figs. 6.30 times 10 to the 18th. So super spontaneous, kind of makes sense. I mean, the delta G was a negative value and the K is way over uh, the number one. So we found out what the equilibrium constant was. Now, the second part says, is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, keep in mind that endothermic and exothermic only relies on a delta H value. It's not delta G. It's not delta S. It's not even the equilibrium constant. It's only delta H values, right? If you have a delta H value of a positive, that means endothermic. If you have a delta H value of a negative, that means exothermic. So that's why I have the delta H numbers as well. We're gonna have to do the same idea 
to just find out what the overall delta H is. And maybe what I can do is I'm just going to kind of move this over a little bit because I just want I just want some room just to do that new formula. So maybe I'll just stick this over here. So what we can do is take the same formula that we did before, right? Delta G equals this, you know, products of delta G minus delta G reactants, right? But instead I could say, okay, I don't want delta G anymore. I could just use the H values. So delta H for the whole entire reaction would be the sum of the H products minus the sum of the H reactants. So I do the same exact thing. I go to my numbers that I found in the back of the textbook and I have to multiply them by their coefficients. So same exact thing here. So I'm going to times the negative 20.6 by two times the other one by one, three over eight times zero, and then two times negative three, uh, 285.83. And I have to add them together, right? So now let's see, let's do the, the reactants first. So two times negative 20.6 minus 296.83, and that looks good. So the reactant side total would be 338.03, and the product side would be two times negative 285, 285.83. So total on that side would be negative, oop, not blue, we want red negative 571.66 products minus reactants. So let's see, delta H for the whole entire reaction is some of the products, negative 571.66 minus the sum of the reactants, which is negative 338.03. And then let's just figure out what that number is. So if I actually just did this, we could just grab those values, this minus the negative 338. And it is a negative value. Specifically, it's a negative 233.63. That would be in kilojoules for the same reason we times by the moles, so the moles cancel out. And since the delta H value is a negative, that means that the reaction was exothermic. And those are your two answers. So maybe I'll just color this one in. This one's pretty easy to color in. But yeah, what'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you so much for being part of this community. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope this is helping you guys out. Let me know in the comments. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And thanks so much. All right, I hope you guys have a great day. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.